Okay, I am gonna tell you about five hard but important changes you need to make to make dating really successful for you in 2020 or whatever new year you're watching this in, in fact. Um, I'm dating coach and head speaker, Hayley Quinn, and I've worked with thousands of men and women, and today I really wanna help you getting in a, into an empowered mindset around dating. So what are these five hard but realistic, tough changes that you need to start beginning to make with yourself? Change number one, and this is a really sucky one, so please don't virtually punch me for saying this, is you need to start saying, and accepting and acknowledging, I could do more. Now, this is tough because so often dating, particularly as a coach, I hear people saying stuff like, there's just no decent men left, or you know, women don't wanna meet men anymore, or whatever variation of that there might be, not necessarily heterosexual either. Um, if you are stuck in that mindset of thinking, well, you know, that's just it then, you know, since online dating happened, nobody wants to meet anybody. If you're throwing your hands in the air, what you're actually doing is you are disempowering yourself. You're just taking away all of your ability to make that change. And instead, you're focusing on blaming outside sources. Now, I'm not to say that there isn't a grain of truth in that. Like, no doubt, dating apps have changed things. Men and women's roles are different to what they used to be. We've got mobile phone technology, which makes people significantly pre less present and a little bit flakier than before. Because of this, what you're gonna find is, it's not that those changes aren't relevant or that they haven't made sense, but if we stick with the dialogue of, well, that's just it then, you are shutting yourself down from creating change. So instead, instead of thinking that's it then, or these factors are all stacked up against me, so what can I do? It's hard to sometimes say, but it's also great to say, you know what, I could do more or I'm gonna try and do things differently, or I'm gonna do things smarter, I'm gonna re-strategize, I'm gonna look at this, this problem in a different way. Start to really motivate yourself around how you can create really positive change. Secondly, now you're on board with creating that positive change, I'm gonna need you to get accountable. Accountability means that you have a system or a mechanism in place which helps you to keep track of all the progress that you want and need to make. Because remember, if you're not changing it, really on some level, you are accepting it. And I really want you to be changing it up and not accepting things in your life or behaviors or results that aren't where you know you want to be. So what are some good ways to get accountable? Well, a nice favorite one that I like to have is actually that you find what I would call an accountability buddy. Now, accountability buddy is someone that you can check in with about how you're feeling and probably someone that has the same goals as you or has recently gone through a similar experience. I would say, if you don't know where to find someone like that, you can always join my club. I've got loads of great single men and women in there who are all on motivated and on the same path of self-improvement. Alongside that, another good exercise that you can do is you can get to know your own excuses. Now, if we are stopping ourselves from taking action, whether that is meeting more people in real life or going to the gym, we will make our minds, we'll come up with some really creative excuses as to why we can't do that thing. We will put our own break and our own block on to why we'll move forward. So how that might come up for you and how that might show up for you is you might say, find yourself saying things to yourself like, oh, I would say hello, but she looks like she's happy talking to a friend or I would ask her out, but you know, no one's that free over, you know, no one's that free at the moment. Or you know what, I could say hello to her, but I just can't really think of what to say. The best way to get on top of your excuses and stop them, um, stop them stopping you from getting towards your goals is just to write them down. Get them out of your head and onto a piece of paper. Third, big hard change to try and make, and this is a process by the way, this is not a overnight on off switch is actually to let go of resentment. Now that again, oh, I don't even like saying that word. It sounds really tough. And believe me, if you've watched my TED talk or if you've just basically led a life as a person, then no doubt there are gonna be people or situations or past experiences that you may feel resentment towards. It could be that you feel that someone really wronged you or that someone really let you down or someone really disappointed you or that a, a situation was really unfair. And again, I'm not to say there isn't truth in that. 
for yourself and in your lived reality, that probably was how you experienced things. However, the longer and the tighter that we hold on to that resentment, the more it actually keeps us away from what we want. An example of this could be, if for instance, you're like, you know, just, I resent, you know, I resent people or I don't trust people, or I just don't like, you know, I don't like this kind of person then actually by not giving us the space to experience people, by stopping you from going out and meeting people, or even worse, starting you to sort of sabotage relationships because you start to immediately fear, oh gosh, all this is happening again. Sometimes that can stop you from having that amazing healing experience that you need to have that's gonna change your opinion of stuff. Um, some practical steps I can give you to let go of resentment is gradually stop talking about that person or bring it up in conversation. Change your dialogue around it. You can just be like, yeah, that sucked, but you know what? I have, you know, I get that's where they were at at the time and, you know, ultimately it was all for the best. Try to also not allow that story from the past to dominate how you are going forward into the future. So just because you haven't met that person you connect with brilliantly yet, that doesn't mean that that's not going to happen in the future. Now, of course, some of these conversations you might want to have with a therapist or a trusted counsellor, probably not the space for it on a YouTube video, but it is important to acknowledge that letting go of some of that resentment is going to be an important and powerful step for you to get towards what you want in the future. Step four is I want you to take daily actions towards your goals. It's like this is the ultimate of New Year's resolutions. Oftentimes people will have a New Year's resolution and it is this big crazy plan that they do for like three days and then it's done and finished. And that is actually gonna get you towards your results. To give you an analogy from a different area of your life, say it was about getting fit. If you're like, well, I'm gonna pack on like, I don't know, five kilograms of muscle or lose 10 pounds of fat or whatever it might be this month, you might actually put yourself under tremendous pressure and in fact never reach that goal. Instead of having this big lofty goal, focus on the daily action or the daily practice instead. Some little step that you can do every single day that will mean actually by the end of the year that you're going to be so much closer to having that um, goal that you want in mind. So good daily actions for dating could be, I'm going to learn how to compliment people in a non-sleazy and respectful and modern way. Uh, I am going to spruce up my dating profile. I'm going to send two messages a day. I am going to spend 20 minutes online every other day making sure I reply to people in a really careful manner. I am going to take up and go to a new hobby once a week where I believe I can meet new people. Uh, I'm going to look out for a great wingman or a great wingwoman that I'm going to start to go out with once a week. So start to think about what are some actions that you can just take week after week after week that are going to keep motivating you. Um, and if you are looking for that wingman or woman, or you do want a set laid out plan of 30 great action steps to take, I will be mentioning this a bit more on YouTube, but I do have a 30 day dating challenge. So you can join at any time. It is on the link below. And what this gives you is 30 little mini videos and they will be telling you exactly the action steps to take every day over that month to really kickstart your dating process. And it will also give you a community of other people who you can meet that are still on that journey. Best of all, your first week is just cost one pound. What? So hit on the link below if that is for you. Final step. So the final hard but good thing to do to change your dating life in 2020 is to remember that feedback is the breakfast of champions. Now, <laughs> as a business person, you get a lot of feedback. You know, if things aren't going well or you, you're not meeting your own standards, you get a pretty strong feedback loop there that stuff isn't right. And at the beginning, whether you're getting feedback about business or your career or your fitness or dating or your social life, feedback can feel tough because it can feel very um, like a judgment. And it can especially feel tough when you know you have been trying so hard to make progress in this area of your life. But if you can change your mindset around it and instead of being like, oh, you know, that's a criticism when I'm already trying so hard. If you'd said you can be like, great, that was such useful information and now I'm going to do it better. And that's going to get me to my goals more quickly. If you can change your mindset around feedback, it is going to help you no end 
to get towards your dating goals. So remember, if you really seriously want to do some hard things that are going to create real change in your dating life this year, then you want to remember that you're going to accept the challenge, you're going to step up to it, you're not going to blame outside sources. You're going to get accountable. Remember, if you're not changing it, you are accepting it. Thirdly, you're going to try and do your best to begin that process of letting go of resentment, whatever that means to you. Fourthly, you're going to take daily actions towards your dating goals. Finally, you're going to start accepting feedback as the breakfast of champions as the most amazing thing that is that's going to really help you out. Now, if you want that feedback, if you want those 30 days of challenge, if you want a major kickstart to your dating life and to meet other people who are on the same journey as you, all you need to do is click below this video to join my 30 days of dating challenge. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see you on the other side. And either way, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you soon.